Okay, well, welcome to field orientation. This is for BSW students. Uh, we're going to give you, kind of pump you full of a lot of information this evening. Um, but my goal is and my hope is that at the end of it, you'll at least have an idea of going into field orientation and kind of what to expect once you're in. Um, I am Dr. Smith. I'm uh, the Assistant Dean of Field Education. I have been in this role since January of 2018. Um, I know that if you've emailed the field office, you're like, they're crazy, because we are. We've got a lot of you all and just two of us right now. And so we are trying our very best to make sure that we're addressing your concerns and getting you placed as quickly as possible. Uh, if you're curious about when the summer application will open, I hope to have that open this week. Uh, as we're going through the, pre the presentation, I'll talk to you a little bit about why there's been a delay in that. Um, but I'm going to actually hand it off to uh, Professor Langford. He is going to talk to you all a little bit about the importance of field and uh, just preparing for field. Yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you. Um, is it this is working? Uh, it was working, I thought it was working. The, the, Not okay. Here we go. Here we go. Um, okay, I'm going to move around just a little bit. Some of you, have, I've, I, I teach. My name's Jim Langford, and I'm assistant professor, and uh, teach largely BSW courses. So some of you I may have seen practice courses I teach. Uh, some MSW, but I've seen some of you in BSW. Welcome on a beautiful night. Uh, actually, maybe in some parts of the world, but not here. Uh, but but welcome on a on a cool wet night. Um, yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit about just uh, self care. I think it's imperative uh, when you think about uh, what you're about to embark on, which is really a crucial part of your professional journey. Um, I was just thinking today. Um, I have a family member who is in medicine, and they spend years doing residencies and internships. Um, I have friends who are in psychology. Uh, my wife, who's a teacher, uh, had to spend uh, a, um, a whole semester or maybe a year working in the classroom with another teacher. So internships is really part of how you learn a trade. And so um, a trade or a profession, and that's what we're, you're embarking on. So it's important you, you understand the rationale for it, but it's also important to you prepare yourself psychologically, emotionally, physically for what's ahead for you. Um, so. Um, it, I want to tell you um, the CSW EPA's core competencies, which means um, this is what's required when we get accredited uh, every seven years. Uh, our accreditor is looking at how we're carrying out these competencies. <laughs> and so I think it's important to know this. You won't be quizzed uh, after this, uh, so there's no going to be pop quiz after tonight's. So anyway. Um, I'm trying to inject a little humor, folks, but I know it's just, it's just, it's just it's kind of hard on a night like tonight. But I think some of this is pretty obvious. The whole thing about professional identity, um, and I did have a red light, um, that it really puts you in the place of being a social worker. I think that's, to me, a given. You dress like a social worker. You talk like a social worker. You should be treated like a social worker. You are a professional on staff. Um, you're, yes, you're a student learning the trade, but you should be treated like a, a, a professional. And in turn, you need to treat those around you, staff around you, and um, um, your clients as professionally as possible. So that means dress. Uh, Dr. Smith will be talking about this. That does mean words you use, the dress, how you dress, those kind of things. You're, you're, you're becoming, you're going to be a professional, a student professional. So uh, I think that's important. In terms of ethical practice, uh, I think it's important to know that uh, we, if you've ever, you've taken, taken social work courses, um, there's, there's um, ethical dilemmas um, that we find ourselves in practice. And I know you've studied that in some ethical, and, 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 and that social work is an ethical practice. And so part of what uh, field allows you to do is to face um, ethical practices, um, um, decision making around ethical issues. Um, I won't belabor the story, but I remember being in hospital and having to advocate for a trans family, a trans person of a, of a kiddo in the hospital. Um, staff didn't want any part of this, and so it was my role as a job to try to help this, this client 
um, the kiddo in this hospital with their parent um, who was trans. And so, again, you, it's an opportunity to work with at-risk populations, to be an advocate, to empower people in which um, um, they don't feel like they have a voice in the matter. So again, it, it, it's an, an opportunity to, to practice, to, um, um, to sort of um, practice being an ethical professional. And so I think that's important to keep in mind. And we just lost the screen. Um, oh, they can't hear me. Well, oh, okay, okay. Um, but we don't have a screen at all. Oh, it's coming back. Okay, um, critical thinking. Okay, so so beyond the ethical thinking, critical thinking is is about asking questions. Uh, to me, critical thinking is also about um, learning about our biases, our prejudices, which kind of goes back into ethical thinking as well. So, um, I, I think uh, being on site, being in the field, uh, um, you sort of come face to face with some of your your biases. Um, and I think that's helpful, though, because you have a supervisor. You have other professionals with you to kind of help you through that. That's why we, that's why we go into the field and practice. Uh, I think it helps us with those kinds of things. Um, I'm still not getting a screen for the, for the group here, but uh, diversity in practice. Um, um, as you might imagine, um, you're working with diverse populations. Uh, as Dr. Smith will talk about, she will try to place you where you want to go, but even where you want to go will probably have you running into people in, in which um, they're different and they're um, racially, ethnically, in terms of sexual orientation, those kinds of things, um, economically, uh, so there'll be some uh, diversity in your practice. Um, trust me, this is what's on the list. Um, well, okay. Let me just kind of go through the list, <laughs> trust me. Um, human rights and justice, let me just kind of go on down here. Uh, I'm looking at practice and engage, assess. Uh, so it gives you a chance to, you've, if you've taken practice classes, you know about engaging, assessing, evaluating, um, termination. It gives you an opportunity to practice that. It also gives you a chance to practice certain ways of, of doing social work, such as if you've ever taken a practice class and you cover cognitive behavioral or cognitive restructuring or solution focused, it gives you a chance to practice. Some places, some supervisors will want you to practice certain models of, of intervention and so that, that is an, a great opportunity to do that. So um, anyway, I'm going to kind of cut on through that. So I've kind of given you uh, some of the uh, explanation for some of these categories here. Um, preparing for field. Um, if you look, um, you should be able to find on your, uh, when you open this up online, you have this uh, about 16 pages long. It's pretty tedious, detailed, but what it's about is having you think through how you're going to work field into your life. Um, folks, I, I know um, um, it might be a little easier to leave it to chance, but I think our point is why not be proactive? Why not think ahead beforehand? If you're going to have to do a long placement, um, 15 weeks of placement, how are you going to work those hours into your life? And so it really just asks you how many hours do you see yourself needing to work? How many hours are you normally with your family? Are there medical issues? So it's asking you some real specific questions. And again, you don't have a crystal ball. You don't know exactly. But I think it's still asking you to kind of think through how, if I've got to do so many hours per week, how am I going to do it? Uh, when I was doing field as a master's student, um, my wife worked. Yay! I was, I, you know, I was, I had, I had a, we had a one paycheck family. Uh, I was able to work third shift at a hospital. That helped me. Um, was it long hours? Yes, but it's worth it at the end. I guess my point is, most of us have to do these kind of things in order to make it to the end with the degree. So. Um, 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 it's a time to make sure you have family or uh, people that can support you in this task. Um, so I think it's, um, that's what this is all about. If you'll open it up, you get a check, you get this list of, um, of um, how this might 
look when you start putting hours down for family and friends and social and these kinds of things. So um, check that out if you will. Um, the other thing that I've given to you, yeah, let me kind of point this out to you. My hope is that even in school right now that you're already practicing self-care. So I'm kind of the self-care time management person plug uh, uh, part of this presentation. Uh, Dr. Smith gives all the, the nuts and bolts. I do the time management self-care. You probably know this for sure. Social workers are not always the best at self-care. We take care of everybody else except ourselves. I'm here to endorse, to encourage you to think about ways that you're going to help yourself through this. Um, and this little checklist, there's nothing magical about it, but it does break down into a variety of different categories and ask you to think about what you can do for yourself uh, emotionally, behaviorally, uh, spiritually to kind of help you get through this time. Um, I, again, I would rather this be proactive than reactive. And so um, I'm not going to ask you to kind of think this through tonight, but I would encourage you, uh, you don't have to wait until field starts. This would be a checklist to look over and say, what can I do now to help me make it through field? <laughs> um, let me, just a side story. When I go exercise, which is really important to me, I seldom feel like doing it, <laughs> but I'm always glad I do. And it's, it's not because I have all this free time. It's because I just do it. I carve out some time in any way possible. So to me, when you've got a busy schedule, you've got family, friends, you've got uh, lots of other things going on, which typically happens in the field, my guess is that you're going to have to carve out some time for yourself to do these kind of self-care things. And the checklist is something that I found that I thought might be something useful, simple. It breaks it down by the amount of time that you might could give to it. And make a contract with yourself. That's, that's what I'm asking you to do. Make a contract to, to try to do this. And, and have somebody else that, if you have family or friends, that can kind of encourage that. Let them know what you're going to try to do. Let them be on your team. Um, and my hope would be that they can be supportive of what you're going to try to do to, um, to help yourself get through. It's a grueling process, but folks, it's satisfying. You'll learn a lot about yourself as well as the practice of social work, and that's what it's all about. And we've all been there. I'm telling you, you're not alone. Uh, all of us that's been in social work have been to field and have done this ourselves. So again, it's, uh, it's, it's the way we learn our trade, and, hope, and my, my hope is that you'll have a positive experience with your supervisor with other social workers and with the clients that you have. So, um, any questions? Okay, I think that's my part, so thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I oh, clicker. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I am going to take you through start to finish a field but really quickly let me just make sure that these uh, the students here can also hear me uh oh okay hopefully they can all right, so I clicked forward a little bit too far. Uh oh, wrong way. Sorry. Okay, so these are some important people that you all need to know. Uh, Ms. Williams, who you've just seen, she gave you the handouts. She is the new admin assistant. She's been with us since December. Uh, you want to know her, you want to be nice to her because she is the person that you will probably first encounter when you come into our office. Uh, she's also the person that as you're gearing up and preparing your application, she will be able to answer a lot of questions for you, okay? Uh, you, you now know me, uh, but you also need to know Natalie Mangum. She is your field advisor. You are all BSW students, correct? Okay, when you apply for field, this is, Ms. Mangum is the person who will match you to the agency. Okay, so you want to know her, you want to make sure that if you have questions about your placement or if you have issues with your placement in starting your placement, okay, then you're going to reach out to Ms. Mangum, okay? Uh, if you have a disability, 
It is imperative that you register with the Office of Students with Disabilities. If you have already done that and you have accommodations already, it's imperative that you let the field office know beforehand. At least try to let us know the semester or so before you're going in, so that way we can work with you on finding a sufficient placement. Uh, the reason that I'm asking for your accommodation letter early is because your accommodations are only for the classroom. They do not translate once you go into field because field is not a class. So when you have an accommodation such as I can turn and work late or things like that, you're not able to necessarily use that in field, so we need to find a work, work around in order to assist you. Uh, every agency that we have requires a background check and probably about 98% of them require a um, drug screening. This is something that likely will come out of pocket for you as the student. There are a few agencies that will uh, incur the, the cost and actually do it for you. Um, but for the most part, it will probably come from you um, purchasing or paying for your drug screening and drug test. If you have a questionable background or something on your background and you're like, oh, I don't know, please contact the field office in advance again because you need, we need to know so that we can assist you and find the workarounds and the agent. We may have one or two agencies that will accept you uh, even with having a background. So let the field office know accommodations and any background issues that you may have. Okay, check your email. Normally, we will send you an email that says, hey, the application for summer is going to open uh, in uh, two weeks. Well, when we, how many of you are going into summer? Okay, we are gonna send you an email that says, hey, the summer application is open, apply. When we send you that email and we say, hey, the summer application is open, apply, apply. Quickly, especially if you need nights and weekends, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more, little bit more about that. But if you need nights and weekends, you need to apply quickly. We assign you based on when you apply. So if someone applies at 1159-001, then or excuse me, dash 01, then they will be assigned before the person that's at 002. Does that make sense? We have, it, it goes in, in chronological order. But every communication that we send from the field office, we will always send to your MyMath email. Some of you may email me from your work email or even from your Gmail, and typically I'll say, please email me from your MyMath email and I'll CC your MyMath email, okay? That, the reason for that is because that's how we can track what we've said to you as a student. So if you come back and say, well, Dr. Smith, you never told me this, I can go back and say, yes, I did right here on this day, okay? Okay, so we have a new system that we are going to. We used to use e-intern. Many of you probably have heard of it. We no longer have it. It's kaput. It's gone. So we're now going into a system called Sonia. Sonia is where you will apply. It's where your timesheets will take place. Uh, it's where you can uh, also do your supervision logs. Everything can happen in Sonia. Now, while I would like to say that all of those things are gonna happen for those of you going into summer placements, um, we may not have all the kinks worked out, okay? Because I'm still working out the kinks just to get the application open. So as soon as uh, I have those kinks worked out, we will, st we will open the application. My hope is no later than the end of the week to have it to where you all can start applying for summer field. Um, once you apply, uh, the next thing that happens, well, let me go through actually and tell you what you need. Bef when you are applying for field, you're going to need two things. One, you're going to need professional liability insurance. You're going to upload this with your application. So before you apply, go ahead and purchase your professional liability insurance because in the application, it's going to ask you to upload it. You cannot complete the application without the professional liability insurance uploaded. Okay? You have to make sure that your limits are 1 million, 3 million. That's 1 million per occurrence, 3 million aggregate. As you're working with the different insurance companies that provide this, they'll know what, what to give you as a student. They'll likely know. But just remember 1 million, 3 million. The cost is roughly about $30. Uh, $50 is probably a little bit over, but right around 30 bucks for professional liability insurance. 
And if you check our website, we actually have a list of vendors there that you can use uh, to, pur to purchase your insurance. The other thing that you're going to need is your resume. And in the email that, I'm, that you will receive from us saying the application is open, we'll put these things also in there. But you're going to need your resume. This is something that we had not required in the past, but we're now going to require because many of the agencies say we want their resume or we want their cover letter or we want this. And so one of the things that I'm trying to eliminate as far as time is if you upload your resume, then the agency that you're going to be assigned to can already see that information in Sonia. Okay? Okay, so we have, I can tell you, 951 agencies that we are affiliated with. And so of those 951, they're all across the state, uh, but we also have a few that are out of the state. Uh, but for the most part, majority of them are probably within the DFW Metroplex. Um, once you, your application is, is approved and you're good to go, you're going to preference. You're going to tell us your top three picks. So I want to go to Catholic Charities first. I want to go to uh, Arlington Life Shelter second. You're going to tell us our goal is to assign you with your top choice. But I'm not going to promise you that that's going to happen, which is why we asked for three. OK, so give us your three preferences. If you don't preference, if you don't give us any agencies, we're going to stick you to the closest agency that accepts the level of student that you are with that's geographically close to you within proximity. Make sense? The other thing that we will often do is if you select an agency, let's say you say, well, I want to go to Catholic Charities and we're like, oh, that's 30 miles. We may email you and say, do you really, are you sure? You know, we can send you there, but just know you're about 30 miles out, okay? When you're in Sonia, you should be able to also see how far you are, the address that you put in Sonia versus the address that's in there for the agency. Does that make sense? So. If you, when you go into Sonia and you put your address in, if you want us to place you based on your work address, then make sure that you use your work address in there. If you want us to place you based on home, then put home. If you want us to pl place you based on school, because maybe you're going to come to class and then go, then put that address in there. Use the address you want us to use in order for proximity reasons to place you. Make sense? Okay. As BSW students, you may, you likely won't be matched to a hospital, but you could be, okay? Uh, typically, our hospitals, our mental health facilities usually take MSW students, advanced MSW students, but we have had a few that have requested this, hence why I put this in here. There are a few more things that you have to do if you're matched with the hospital. Uh, not only do you do the drug screen and the criminal background check, you also have to do a TB test. And the TB test, actually some of our nonprofits and some of our government agencies require that. Um, you're going to need your current immunizations or you're going to need a tither which shows that you're already immune to. The main three that they ask for are DTAP, MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella, and uh, varicella. Those are the top three. Some of the others ask for, for a little bit more, but for the most part, those are the three, diphtheria, tetani tet tetanitis, tetanus. Those are the three that they're looking for. They're also going to want to know that you've taken and completed a CPR course. You need to have a current driver's license. You need to have health insurance. If you do not have health insurance, but you are an on-campus student, you should have probably paid a fee for health services. That will sub to substitute as your health insurance. Does that make sense? So that even if you've never used the health services center here on campus, you can still, that still counts as your, as your, uh, as your health insurance because you can receive services there even if you have not. Uh, also, depending on the time of year, you may need uh, a flu vaccine. So, for instance, if you're going in summer, you won't need a flu vaccine. But for fall, if you're planning to take field in fall, you're going to need a flu vaccine. Um, they may ask for your Social Security number and your date of birth, a date of birth as well. All of these items, you're actually going to send to the field office. Okay, when you send, if you get sent to a hospital and you send them to the field office, send everything in one email. Here's why. We have to actually send the, the hospital an, a letter. It's called an attestation letter that lets them know, yes, we've verified everything that this student 
has the every requirement that you that you've stated we verified all of it we have the results within our office we hold those results in our office for at least six years because that's our retention plan so just know that um, when you send these when you send them in it's easiest for us if you send it all in one email so that way we can go through and verify and we don't have to click to this email click to that email it's all right there for us so get everything done because here's the thing even if you send me the drug screen and the criminal background check and you send me this and you send me that and you send it to me all in different days guess what I can't send your attestation letter until you get it all to me anyway so you may as well just wait until you have it all done and then send it into the field office okay the process for being placed I'm just gonna go through okay so you're gonna submit your application you're going to go into Sonia once you do that the field office will then assign you if you've completed it fully and have all of the documentation that we need you're going to receive an email that's going to say, you've been assigned to X agency. Please contact them within 24 to 48 hours to schedule an interview. At the same time you receive that email, the agency is receiving an email that says, this student has been assigned to you. They're going to contact you within 24 to 48 hours, okay? So when you call the, the uh, agency, they're expecting your call because they know that you know, this student has been assigned to them. This is part of the reason why we ask that you don't approach agencies prior to, because a lot of times the agencies are like, I don't have anything that tells me you're, you're assigned to me. And so they won't talk to you. They'll tell you, I don't, you know, wait until you're, you've been assigned to us or wait until the field office lets us know if you're coming. Um, so once you receive, once both parties receive that, that email, you're going to go into your interview. You're going to be professional. You're going to be dressed professionally, which means you're not going to be dressed like Dr. Smith. You're not going to have on uh, jeans with holes. You're not going to probably have on these boots or this shirt. You're going to have on nice attire. I'm not going to tell you wear a suit, but it needs to be nice. When you walk in, this is one of my biggest pet peeves. When you walk in, please do not address the field instructor by their first name. You should address them by Mr. or Miss, whichever you're being presented with. I often have students that send me emails and they say Donetta and it's an instant put off. And it's not because I care that I'm Dr. Smith, it's because just out of respect you don't know me and so you should address me as such, right? Okay, so you're gonna do that, you're gonna be professional, you're gonna get it all right and they're gonna say yes, we will take you. So what happens then is they go into Sonia and they say yes, I accept this student. And once they say, yes, I accept this student, you're going to go in Sonia and say, yes, I accept this placement. Now, if for some reason you say, this, the agency says, yes, I accept this student, but you say, no, I don't accept this placement, you're probably going to get an email that says, why did you decline the placement? There's only a couple reasons why I will say, okay, we'll move you to a different location. One being there's a family emergency and you're like, well, I really need to be X. I need to be closer here. I need to do this. Um, and although I know I said I wanted to go there at first, I need to go here. So family emergency. Uh, the other is if, it, it, if there is a trigger for you be working with that population. Let's say that you uh, have gone through some mental health issues in the past and we assign you to a mental health placement. That may not be a healthy place for you and I understand that. So again, you're going to let us know in the field office, eh, this may not be, really be a good placement. I even had a student who uh, gra her grandmother had passed and she had taken care of her until she was like, I don't think I could do anything with the elderly. Make sense? Okay. So both of you accept, you're good to go. The agency is going to tell you, here are the things I need you to do. Do your criminal background check, do this, do that. You're going to go through and do all of your checks. Uh, and then you're going to start, summer starts June 3rd, okay? That's the first day you can begin to earn hours. Now, if for some reason the agency says, no, we deny, we, we, we decline the student. Um, then we start the process over. The agency will let us know that in Sonia. They'll go in and decline, decline you as a student. And then the field office will go back and we'll reassign you. Likely we'll try to go to option two or three if we have availability. In order to complete field as a BSW student, you have to have a G GPA of 2.5. I cannot emphasize this enough. I can't, if you come to me and you say, I have, but, a, but Dr. Smith, I have a 2.499, and I'm going to say, nope, it's not a 2.5. 
you have to have a 2.5 in order to take field, okay? So make sure that your GPA is where it needs to be, but also make sure, and you may want to take a picture of this, that you have completed these courses and you have successfully passed all of them, okay? Um, there is, you also need, did you guys get your picture? I saw somebody taking a picture. You also need uh, 3303 and 3306. You have to have successfully passed uh, all of those in order to take your, in order to complete field. Now, there's one exception, 3306. It's practice three, and as long as you have completed, uh oh, as long as you have completed this along with 3303, you can start the first half of field. Does that make sense? You can take, you, if you're doing a split, you can do the first half of field. But you have to concurrently do 3306 with that first half in order to be eligible to take the second half. And you have to pass 3306 in, the, in, in that semester in order to do it. So let's, let me give you a scenario. You're taking uh, 4951, 3306, and maybe, um, I don't know, some other random course, an elective. You fail 3306. But you've already, I've, you're already placed, right? Because in your, in your 4951, we put you with an agency, you're going back there. You fail 3306, you'll need to let the agency know, unfortunately, I'm going to have to come back at a later date to complete the last half of my, of my um, internship. You don't lose those 240 hours that you just did for 4951. You will keep those hours, but now you still, need, you still have the second half that you need to do. Does that make sense? All right. Okay, so you can do field in one of two ways. You can do a split placement or you can do a block placement. If you do a split placement, you are going to do about 16 hours a week in a fall, spring semester because you have approximately 15 weeks, give or take, to complete your hours, okay? Uh, in the summer, if you do a split, then you're going to do about 22 hours because you only have between 11 and 12 weeks to complete all your hours. If you do a split, you're going to, do, you're going to go to the same placement for two consecutive semesters. So it doesn't go, okay, I'm at Catholic Charities for the first half and then I'm going to go to, to, all, to Arlington Life Shelter for the second half. No, you're going to be at Catholic Charities for both halves, okay? Block you're going to do about 32 hours a week in a fall or spring semester. Again, you have 15 to 16 weeks. You're going to complete all 480 hours in that one semester. You cannot do block unless it is approved by Dr. Pretorius in the summer, okay? So if you are like, but I really need to graduate in August because I got this awesome job and it's gonna require me to go to Bermuda. Well, you need to, talk, and you need to do it over summer. You gotta to talk to Dr. Pretorius because she has to approve that first. Um, and then just know you're going to complete all of the hours in that one semester. Okay, so here are the courses that you need to enroll in whenever you're going into field. 4951 for the first half of field, 4952 for the second. If you're doing a split placement, you're going to register for summer for 4951. And it's going to have both your seminar and your field. That's why it's eight credits. Nine credits, excuse me, it's nine credits for 49.51. You're going to have both in one. So you'll have one instructor at UTA that you'll, that you'll work with. So when you're talking to your uh, academic advisor, they may say, are you registered for field and seminar? You are. As long as you're registered for 49.51, you're registered for field and seminar. So in the second semester, which would be fall, you're going to register for 49.52. And it's just the second half. Uh, of your seminar in your field. Does that make sense? Uh, with, since you have both seminar and field, that means that you're actually going to have a class, you're going to have assignments, you're going to have things that you're going to do in that class, uh, but then you also have to complete the 240 hours and the hours don't intermingle. So the three hours a week that you're in class doesn't count for the 240 hours that you're in the field. Does that make sense? Okay, if you're block in the same semester, you need to register for 4951 and 4952 because you're going to do both halves in that same semester, right? 
you're still going to have field and seminar. It still works the same. Just know you're going to have double the seminar load because you're in two different courses, right? Also, I want you to know that you can take 4951 face-to-face -face and or online. You can do, we have both options. Okay, I talked about this already, about being professional. Have your resume whenever you go. Uh, so you're going to upload it, but print it out and make sure you have a couple of copies with you when you go to interview. And then practice interviewing, practice a couple of questions. Uh, I will tell you this, that some agent, our agencies do interviews differently. Some of them do them one-to-one, -one. some of them do panel. Maybe it's three, of, three people from the agency and one, stu one student. It may be five students and five people from the agency. They do it in all kinds of different ways. So be prepared uh, and just know that you may not be interviewing just by yourself. Typically, the agencies will let you know we're going to do a panel interview. There's going to be multiple students and multiple uh, individuals from the agency. Uh, a lot of things that you need to know or that you're looking for are on our website. Now, I will be honest and say our website is a little outdated. It's dinosaur age. But uh, over the next, sem the course of this uh, semester and into summer, I'll be working to update those things. Uh, the information that you have in, your, in the handouts that you received and in this PowerPoint are all, the information is updated there. But most of the things that you're going to want to know here are actually accurate. Um, but there are just a couple of things that are not. So anything that you're looking for, you can always go to our website. You can also go to um, the BSW program manual, uh, field, or field manual, and you can find a lot of information there as well. Okay, there are some important documents that you all will need as you're in field. And I'm going to actually pull these up because I want you to be able to take a look at them. Okay, one is your, the BSW uh, learning contract. Excuse me. Your learning contract is what tells you what, excuse me, what you're going to be doing throughout the semester or throughout the two semesters, okay? So, this is something that you should do probably within the first week of going into field with your field instructor. Your field instructor should not say to you, get your learning contract completed and bring it to me. You need to sit down. This needs to be a conversation. There's no way that you can fill out this learning contract because you have no idea what you're getting ready to do for the next 16 weeks or 32 weeks. You have no clue. So your field instructor should be actively involved in helping you uh, complete this. If you find that that does not happen, then please let us know. Uh, some uh, field instructors already have a preset one, and that's fine. They'll say, just copy this one, and this one will work. And that, that does actually work, because typically, you're probably doing the same thing as a student previous to you anyway. But I want you all to be familiar with this. Now, if for some reason class doesn't start on the first day of class, therefore, maybe if you're online, your Blackboard is not up. It happens. Start your placement and go ahead and fill out your learning contract, because you know where it is, right? Okay. Also in here we have uh, timesheets and then um, supervision logs. Now with timesheets, you can use either, we have uh, uh, Excel uh, version and a Word version. You can use whichever. But just know if you use the Excel version, it will, the formulas are already in there. It'll add your hours up for you. If you use the Word, you're going to actually have to write it in or you can type it in, but it's not going to add, add your hours up. Um, you can also use the agency's timesheet. Some agencies say, no, we want you to clock in on the computer or we need you to clock in this way. That's fine. Uh, just make sure that you're able to account for all of your hours at the end of the semester in whichever form you're, you're going to use, okay? Your supervision logs, you do need to use our form for your supervision logs, okay? You're going to have 15 to 16 supervision logs, not 12, not 11. No, you need 15. So. If for some reason you all miss, you miss weekly supervision with your field instructor, you just need to write that down. 
we, the field instructor was sick, you were sick, someone was on vacation, someone was at a conference, put that on the supervision log, you both need to sign it, you, yourself and your field instructor. And you'll see, it's a fairly simple form, let me just pull it up for you all. Um, Okay, can you all see that pretty, pretty good? There we go. Um, so you're just gonna tell me, tell us what, what you discussed during that uh, particular field supervision time. You're also going to talk about any plans or, or actions that are gonna happen next. Maybe you're in the middle of working on a project, so what's the, what are the next steps that you're gonna work on the next, within the next week? Uh, and then if you have any topics for further discussion, a lot of times this is where I'll find many of the ethical dilemmas that may have happened in the week or during that time. Students will usually say, you know, this happened or that happened or I, I you know, met, had to meet with somebody that I knew or something like that. They'll put that information there. You're going to sign and then also your field instructor is going to sign each week. Okay. Okay, and then the, the only other thing that you really need to know is there's an end of term, end of term paperwork checklist. Unfortunately, we are still in the dinosaur years. Hopefully this will change with you all going into summer, but it may not. If it does not, that means that we need the hard copies of everything you did throughout the semester. We need the original learning contract and not a copy of. So if it's in blue ink, I need the blue ink. Your, the, the originals of your learning contract and the originals of your, of your timesheets. All of those items, you're gonna give me the originals. Now, if we are in Sonia, then you can do it all electronically and you don't have to turn in anything, you don't need to turn in anything because it's already stored there for us. Make sense? Okay, these are things that we're not ever gonna have to worry about, but I want you to know what they are in the event that we do have to worry about them. One is a request to transfer to another placement. That's you as a student saying, okay, this is crazy. I'm making copies all the time. I'm doing this. I'm getting coffee for people. I want to go somewhere else. Then you're going to submit a, a transfer form. It's going to come to me uh, and I will determine, I'll probably speak with you and say, okay, what's going on? And we'll determine if you need to transfer. Again, remember, transfer is only for two reasons, family emergency and or uh, trigger something or an ethical dilemma or someone tries to choke you or something crazy happens at your placement, then yes, I'll move you. Uh, there's also a withdrawal from your placement. Uh, in the event that you have to withdraw, I, don't, I really don't have a say. I'm not going to tell you, well, no, you can't withdraw from the course. No, I'm not going to tell you that. But go ahead and complete the form because you need to make sure that you're letting all the parties know that you're, going, that you're no longer going to come back. So the field instructor, myself, and also your liaison. There's also an interruption of field. This is a termination. This means that your placement is like she did the most outlandish thing and they're gone. Uh, in the event that that happens, then you will have to go before a committee of faculty that will determine what happens next. Um, you can get a, dis they could decide, well, let's just reassign this student and give them another chance. They can say, well, you know what, actually you're out of the program. We don't want that form ever to come to us, ever. Uh, and then there's also a student performance agreement. Before we get to a point of interrupting your placement, we hope that your field instructor will complete, we call it a spa, it's probably not a good term for it, but we hope that they'll complete a spa with you to say, you know, you, you've been showing up late, I need you showing up on time, here's the time that I expect you to be here, and it'll also give you a timeline. So two weeks, we're gonna look at this and we'll revisit it. Uh, so kind of like a corrective action plan. We don't want those either. Okay, so as a student, uh, you're going to abide by the code of ethics. You're also going to be looking, observing that the agency is abiding by the code of ethics as well. You're going to be observing that the agency is abiding by the code of ethics. I said it twice because I don't want you to walk in and be like, well, you know, you can't do. No, 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 no. We're a student. We're going to learn. We're just going to, you know, going to kind of coast it. Now, if it's something that is just, I mean, crazy, you know, your field instructor sleeping with a the client, then 
you might want to tell somebody. Um, that, that I understand. But if it's something that, you know, you're like, oh, I don't know if I agree with that, you may have a conversation about it. Maybe during, field, uh, during your weekly supervision, that would probably be a good time to do that. Uh, and just maybe ask, you know, why do you do this or why do you do it this way or things like that. Please don't try and tell, these, tell people how to run their agencies because that, that never turns out well. <laughs> Uh, you're going to accept weekly supervision and feedback. Just know that everything's not always going to be great. You're going to get some great feedback. You're going to get some constructive feedback, but that's why you're there. You're there to learn. And so I will say that probably 90 Eight percent of our field instructors are really eager and really excited to have students there in the agency. Uh, the other two percent we're working on, um, but for the most part, agencies are usually very excited to have the students there. They're really willing to work with you, really want to show you the ropes and how things go. So make sure you're not going to do it all perfect in the in the first go. So be open and receptive to it. If you have an issue, the first thing you should do is consult with your field instructor. Whether it's an issue with your field instructor, you should be able to say, you know, I didn't agree with or I don't agree with. You should be able to have that conversation. But there also may be that you have an issue with someone else in the agency. And so, again, go to your field instructor first and try to resolve it there. If you cannot, then you can go to your field liaison. And I'll tell you who each one of these individuals are. Uh, your field liaison is actually your instructor. They're your instructor of record with UTA. They are the person that will run your seminar course. You can go to them and say, you know, I have this issue with, you know, my field instructor maybe, and they can give you and they'll help you um, kind of navigate through how you can have that conversation with the field instructor. If they need to have the conversation with you and the field instructor, they'll do that. They are there as your ally. They're there as your supporter. So uh, they, they can definitely assist you if you have an issue. Um, the other thing that you're going to want to make sure that your learning contract, your timesheets, and your supervision logs are all signed by yourself and your field instructor. Now, some of you may go into an agency. Let me just see something really quickly. I'm going to go here. Some of you may go into an agency and you have a task supervisor. That's someone that may assist the field instructor with managing your day-to-day -day task, but they are not your field instructor. They cannot sign off on your documentations, excuse me, documentations, on your documentation. If, and I do check, if there is a signature from someone that is not a approved field instructor, I will tell you, you need to go back and have the field, your field instructor sign this please make sure that your field instructor has a BSW at the very least and two years of experience post-graduation. Now, we in the field office verify that if they're an affiliated agency and we send you there, they're likely, they likely are. But occasionally, when you go into an agency, they may say, oh, we have this new person and they're going to be your field instructor, and they haven't alerted the field office. So if you find that, then you alert the field office. Let us know because, again, we have 951 agencies, so we can't keep up with all of them. Uh, but we try our very best, and most of the agencies are good about letting us know. Um, okay, your field instructor... They are there to, um, to mentor you, to guide you, to direct you, to help you uh, with everything that's happening within the agency. Um, they're there to show you the ropes. You should be shadowing. You should be, uh, they should shadow you. You should shadow them. They should provide you with some sort of orientation so that you're familiar with the work environment and what's this going to look like. They should tell you about safety. Where do you go in case there's a fire? Where do you, what are their expectations if you know, there's a disaster? They should be going through all of those things with you as you're coming aboard. Um, the other thing is they're also going to be evaluating you, so they're going to do your midterm eval, they'll do your final eval. Um, and they must provide you with one hour of supervision every week. Now, supervision can happen in multiple ways, and I'm okay with the multiple ways that it happens, but I need it to happen. One, you can say every week we're going to meet Wednesdays at 3 p.m. from 3 to 4. Great. Great. You could also say, okay, we're going to meet every Wednesday from 3 to 3.30, and then we're going to see each other every day, and we'll spend time one-to-one -one as, as you're interacting with clients. So maybe we take 10 minutes as we're writing up case notes or however. But every week you should see that individual for one hour. 
The other thing is, if there are multiple interns, you may do joint supervision, and that's okay. However, if you as a student need to see your field instructor one-to-one, -one, they need to give you that opportunity to do that as well. Okay, your liaison. That is the person that's at UTA. They may not physically be here, but it is your instructor. They are there to be an advocate, a mediator. They are, they are your ally. They are your supporter. Uh, they will review and approve all of your documents before they turn it into the field office. Uh, they're going to assess and monitor your progress. They're going to ask you, turn in your timesheet. So make sure you're keeping up with your timesheet because likely your field, your field liaison is going to say, okay, turn in your timesheet uh, because they want to ensure that you're on track. And that's something that you and your field instructor should also be looking at. Um, I hate to see when a student uh, says, well, I have 180 hours in the field instructor. Like, well, I have you down 450 hours. And now, you know, we've got this 30 hour discrepancy. So make sure that you're talking with your field instructor and that you guys are on the same page with your with your hours uh, and then they'll review and sign of course all of your documentation as well primarily your learning contract and your end of term paperwork those are the two that they're going to sign and they are the individual that will assign your course grade so be nice uh, they uh, will take the suggested grade so at times from your field instructor we ask every field instructor what grade would you suggest however the, there's one caveat to you all and that is because you're in a you have a seminar component 30 percent of your grade comes from seminar comes from the coursework 70 percent comes from the actual time you're in the field Okay, so do your coursework because you can wind up with a C or less depending on if you're not doing, if you're, if you have not completed the coursework, but you've completed the hours, you can still wind up with with a lower grade. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I talked, touched on this uh, a little bit, but kind of your points of contact. Your field instructor is always going to be your first point of contact when you're in when you're in the field. If you have an issue there, again, you should be able to go directly to your field instructor. If that does not work then your next point of contact is your field liaison. Again, they're your supporter, they're your advocate, so utilize them if you need to. Then if you, let's say you go field instructor, I've gone to my, my field instructor, I've gone to my field liaison, and I still don't have the resolution that I want. Your next point of contact is your field advisor, which is? Thank you, Ms. Mangum, that's correct. She also is your supporter, your advocate. She will intervene if she needs to, if she, if she also needs to, then she'll come to me and say, Dr. Smith, we have this issue. How do we, how can we resolve it? Okay. If you as a student are like, I am not getting anything that I need, then you can come all the way down here and I'm down there and you can be like, Dr. Smith, I really need your help. Uh, no, if you do need help, if you find that it's something that's so big, it surpasses all three of those, then please feel free to touch base with me. Okay. You are going to be evaluated twice in every semester. You do a split, you're going to be evaluated four times. You do a block, you're going to be evaluated twice. Once at midterm and then once at final. The links or your evaluations will be sent directly to your field instructors, okay? Your field liaison should tell you, I've sent the links to your field instructor. Please ensure that they complete it, okay? Um, Oh, I just said that. You, okay, once, the, once it's completed, you will also receive a copy of your evaluation. So as soon as the field instructor hits submit, it's going to send you a transcript to let you know exactly what they said. And that happens for both your midterm and for your final, okay? The midterm is important because right after the midterms are done, then it's going to your midterm call, which is the call between yourself, your field liaison, and your field instructor. That's going to take place. Your field liaison is going to use that midterm eval to kind of um, carry the conversation, if that makes sense. So if there are some areas of improvement that were marked, your field, your field liaison is going to ask about those. If you're doing really great, they're going to ask about what you're doing and how you're doing. So just know that if we don't get the midterm or the final by the date that it's due, we're going to bug you because we know that you have direct access and you are able to see your field instructor each day. Okay, the field calendar. It's updated, it's out there. However, the summer application date says February 11th, I know. 
It's not going to be February 11th. It will hopefully be February, let's say 21st. But don't, don't quote me, okay? If it's not there February 21st, don't get me. But my goal is, again, to have that out there for you. Each semester, I will update the calendar. I want to give you one other caveat. If for some reason class starts late, you're going to your placement, but your class hasn't started yet for some reason, I will update the dates once class starts. Does that make sense? Because if I put the dates out there and I say, your learning contract is due three weeks into the semester, but you may not actually have a class until two weeks in the semester, well, I'm going to have to extend the date now. You and the liaisons are like, what's going on? I thought they were supposed to turn it in here. So I usually will wait until classes actually start before I update the calendar. But you can find, like right now, we have all the spring dates and we have uh, the summer uh, op application open date out there. Questions? Yes, ma'am. So um, you said that we need to have uh, practice security needed before we can apply. Like, if I'm enrolled in those classes right now, I can't apply for summer until I'm done with those classes? No, no, no. You're going to apply. You're going to go ahead and apply. But what will happen is if for some reason you fail one of the two or your GPA goes under, then uh, we'll come back and tell you, you can't take field, you need to put it, you need to withdraw. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because you're not going to have your grades until well into, you know, summer's getting ready to start by the time you'll have your grades. Okay. So. And then the other question, um, I just got a job um, at, um, at this agency and I'm a peer support, but I want to intern with them. Okay. How, how could I do that? Like, do I contact them first and, like, apply through them or... How would I um, Actually, MHMR? Okay, MHMR, Tarrant County? Mm -hmm. Okay, they're already affiliated with us. That would be the first thing you would do. If you, if you work at an agency or if you find an agency, let's say you just meet, meet someone and they're like, oh, I want to have interns, but they, and they, they're not currently affiliated, send them, have them contact the field office so we can get that process going. But since they're already affiliated, you're going to go onto our website where I showed you those forms and documents. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a place of employment form. Okay. You're going to complete that form. Just like print it off mm -hmm. and bring it to the field office? Um, you, can, you can actually scan and email it to the field office. We're not that much of a dinosaur. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can take a picture and email it? No, no, I want you to scan and email it because I actually have to sign it. Oh, okay. okay. But when you I do... Can, I can just press. Sorry, I don't have a scanner. So I don't... Um, you can bring it here if you, if you... If you need to, you can bring it to us, but... Mm -hmm. okay. You can. Um, but when you, when you complete your place of employment, we call it a POE. Uh, when you complete that form, it's not just you, but your, your current supervisor and also your, field, your proposed field instructor. All three are going to have portions to complete. Okay, let me tell you the requirements to do it at your job. There are two. One, you cannot intern in the same department that you work in. Right. Two, you cannot, your current employer supervisor cannot be your field instructor. Right. So you, you're going to have to know who your field instructor is because it can't be your supervisor. If you send it to me without a field instructor, I'm going to kick it back and say, you need to, you've got to know who your field instructor so is. If you want to go with your place of employment, then just if you tell us, if you say, I want to go with, I want to go with my place of employment, you put that as your top choice, we're going to assign you there. Oh. Once you're assigned there, then you'll know who, who's the point of contact for us. They'll then tell you, here's the field instructor okay. that you're going to be assigned okay. to. Does that make sense? So you don't need to do any of that. We, the field office will do, will, your field instructor will be assigned through the agency. We'll assign you to the agency. They'll assign you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in there, in your application, it asked you, do you work here? And it's going to, and you're going to say, yes, I, I work here. And so then it's going to tell you, you need to make sure you complete the POE form. Okay. Yeah, you can do it, and MHMR is huge, so it won't be a problem, but you just got to make sure that you have all the proper pieces that make sense in order to do it. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, since you guys have over 700 agencies 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so you you can see the you can see the complete list. This is actually new because E intern didn't do this. You can see every single agency that we're affiliated with when you go in there. Now, it's not going to tell you they do nights and weekends, they do days, they do this, they do that. It's not going to necessarily tell you that. It didn't, it didn't say that in e-intern. If you tell us, I need nights and weekends, we know, and so then we know, okay, this agency offers nights and weekends. So let's say you preference and you preference an agency as number one that doesn't offer nights and weekends. We're going to email you and say they don't offer nights and weekends. Do you still want to go there? Okay. So we'll, we on the on our end we can see we can see if they offer nights and weekends. But I'll be honest with you, we probably know them because everybody needs nights and weekends. So we're pretty familiar with. So if you tell us, we'll know we'll know where to send you. Let me get you because I think I saw your hand a little bit ago. If you, okay, now your BSW, so you can't technically do block in the summer. Um, you would need to get with Dr. Pretorius to see if you can do that. Um, you would be full time, full time because it's 18 hours total. So, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Be yes. Yes. Because if you if you put in, I'm trying to think if you can even you can put. I think you can mark that you want to do block. But if you're BSW, we're going to kick it back to you and say you can't do block. You got to do split unless we know that you that you've already been approved to do so. So yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I saw a hand. Yes, ma'am. So you said from the ninth weekend, we need to let you guys know. Mm -hmm. How do we let you know? Do we send you an email? No, no, no. It's in your. It's in the application. In the application, it asks, do you need nights and weekends? You're going to put yes. Uh, I think it may even ask you kind of a schedule of what you need. So do you need five, you know, I need five to nine, or I need Saturdays and Sundays or something like that. It'll, it'll, you'll, you'll be able to put in your application. Yes, ma'am. Um, question. Mm -hmm. My job is an email, so I'm pretty much an unemployed by April. Mm -hmm. So will you make sense for me just to find, like, I want to do blocks because I know I'm not going to have a job. Uh, again, you've got to get permission to do block. I don't, it doesn't, let me say this, in the field office, we place block and split, so it doesn't matter to us. The main thing is you've got to have permission as BSW students to do it. Okay, so you would then do a block in the fall? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you could do that. You can do a block in the fall. Yes, I think there is an area at the end where you can put additional comments or things like that in there to let us know. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. When you apply online for an internship on Sign Up, you still have to go through my math to try to get a registration here. Yes, you still have to go and register for your class. Okay, make sure, make sure, make sure you register. If you don't register for your class, but you've applied for field, that means you've got a field instructor, you're going to a placement, but nobody's, no, there's no one on the UTA side that's, that's able to oversee you. If you register for field, but you don't apply, if you register for field, but you don't apply for field, that means you've got a class, but you don't have anywhere that you're going. So you've got to do both. You've got two pieces whenever you're coming into field. You need to apply and you've got to register for course, for the course. Yes, sir. Last question. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me tell you, for summer, the actual last day of class is August 8th, okay? Yes, we put August 11th because that's the last day of finals. You can earn hours up until the last day of finals. That's why we put that date out there. Now, if you're, you're going to be graduating, because once you do field, you're done, you can stop, but only two weeks prior to the end of the semester. Now, I'll be honest with you, I prefer that you finish it out. It's not a commitment of 480 hours. It's a commitment of 15 weeks because remember, you're going to have clients likely when you're there, especially if you're going to be blocked. You're going to have clients fairly quickly. You may need to follow a client for 
a certain stretch of time. So if you're if you stop early, now you've put the agency in a situation where they've got to figure out who's going to pick that up. But not only that, you've now transitioned your client earlier than what would be normal. So commit to the weeks and not necessarily the hours. But if you have to stop, then you can quit. You can you can end up to two weeks early. So once you, once you know for sure, make sure that that's kind of one of the first things you talk about. Even in, in, in the interview stages uh, with the field instructor, just let them know, you know, I have this coming up and so, you know, I can keep you abreast as, as we go. But, but let them know up front. And I say that to all of you, if you have vacation, if you have, you know, any something planned, a conference for work, let your field instructor know up front. Because again, you cannot count those hours as part of your as part of your, your 240 or 480. So that means you're gonna have to make them up at some point. So go ahead and start talking about and thinking about those things now. Uh, Jim touched on this uh, in talking about, you know, preparing for field. You need to think about all those things. I will tell you, if you're going to do start field in the summer, I would advise you not to take a vacation. And I'm going to tell you, I'm saying that to you because you have 11 weeks, 12 if you include the week of finals. It's a short time and it moves very fast. And so you miss two or three days and you've, you're behind. And so now you don't have as much wiggle room to make up those hours, okay? So make sure, make sure that you're talking about and you're thinking about. If you're going to take vacation, again, start preparing and start letting your field instructor know now uh, as you're interviewing, okay, I have this coming up and so how can we, how can we work around? Other questions? Yes, ma'am. You, uh, it should not, but don't quote me there. You, you know who you should talk to? Your academic advisor. Do you know who that is? Yeah, they actually, when you ask for field. When they say, what orientation are they speaking of? Um, this one? For the DSW. It's like a couple weeks ago. It's like before classes. Oh, that is, that is put on by Dr. Pretorius. I have nothing to do with that and so um, talk with her I don't think that it would be it would prevent you from from enrolling but you email Dr. Pretorius she'll be able to tell you for sure other questions yes ma'am uh, 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 registration opens April 1st for summer and fall April 1st for summer and fall other questions I'm gonna let uh, the the ladies and gentlemen on Zoom asked some questions as well. Okay, if you're joining us via Zoom, if you have questions, you can ask them now. You, can, you may want to unmute yourself if you have one, because I think most of you are probably muted. No. Hello, can you hear me? Oh yes, I can hear you. Okay, so did you say that we can start to apply for on April first? You can register for class. You can register for forty nine fifty one on April first, or forty nine if you okay. need to register for both. Yes, April first is when registration for summer and fall. Yes. But to apply for field, that's going to happen hopefully this week. The application will open. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. Other questions from you guys? So if we're going to, if we're preparing for field work in the fall and the spring, if we were going to split it into two semesters, we should go ahead and apply in this April when it when registration opens up. Uh, yes, you need to go ahead and register for the course in April and the fall application for field. Uh, we'll send an announcement. It'll probably open uh, right before spring break. Okay, so just register for the classes and then we'll get another notification for the field work. Yes, you'll get, so you're going to receive a notification that says the, the fall application for field is open.
Uh, and that's when you're, you're going to apply for field then. And then you're going to get probably an email. I think, I think uh, academic advising sends an email that says registration is open. So essentially, you will have applied for field prior to you even enrolling in the course. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. Other questions? No? Do I? Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> um, do I register on Sonya first and then do the learning contract for summer uh, internship? Yes, yes. You're going to register first. You need, uh, you need to apply. Let me say, let me use the right term. You're going to apply for field first. And then you won't do your learning contract until you've actually started your placement. That's the, the first week that you're in your placement. That's the first thing you should do is your learning contract. Does that make sense? Yes, and I just want to say thank y'all so much for putting this video together because we really needed it over here. Uh, this is students. We really needed this. Uh, we, I understand, and this has been a priority of mine for some time. So I will make sure we will continue to offer this online and via and face-to-face. -face. So I'm glad that at least most of your questions were answered here. Other questions, even from the audience here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that, when would that open, like summertime or would it open like fall? Uh, it will probably open in September-ish. Okay. Yeah, early, late August, September time frame. Other questions? No? Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, so remember you're committing to, to weeks. So you should, by the time you complete your hours, you're probably at the, towards the end of your weeks. If for some reason you get to, let's say you get to the end of the semester, let's say you do go over 10 hours, that's fine. Um, and you still have a client that you're seeing, the agency will know to go ahead and roll that client, roll the client back into or with someone. Does that make sense? So you don't need to worry if you if you do if you are seeing a client. Let's say you have 15 weeks, but the program is 20 weeks. You're not going to be able to see them right the whole time. So that's okay. But as far as your commitment to, I want it to be that you're there 15 weeks, 11 weeks, however many weeks are in the semester. Make sense? Other questions, concerns? You want to yell at the field office? Don't do that. I'm kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay, well, I thank you guys so much for your time this evening. I hope it was helpful. Again, please reach out to us if you have questions. And the same for you all online as well. Thank you all.